Okay guys, uh, we're here in the armory again. Um, here in the northeast it's been pretty cold. Um, so we want to kind of do some tips on cold weather carry and uh, some stuff you're going to have to look out for. Uh, I guess the first thing is, um, you know, with cold weather carry, you know, if it's really cold, you're probably going to be wearing gloves. Um, it's hard to operate a handgun with any kind of gloves. But you're going to want some kind of gloves that fit pretty tight. I mean, you're not going to want your regular old mechanics gloves unless they're really high quality. Um, pulling your trigger accurately and effectively you know, is probably going to affect your accuracy you know, downrange quite a bit. Um, the other thing that could affect the accuracy downrange and, you know, being warm in cold weather is the size of the gun and you know if you have gloves on and uh, that can make a big difference you may want to switch up what gun you carry just for cold weather and uh, that can make a big difference you know, holster selection could make a difference whether you have a, a serpa type with this with this catch on it to release or whether you just have a regular retention type um, like the, the stealth operator holsters we had in an earlier video um, really test it out. Uh, the big thing is you want to, uh, there again, train like you fight and test it out at the range. See what works for you. It's all personal preference, really, a lot of it. One of your considerations, uh, like you mentioned, on the on the uh, finger latch for the for the Blackhawk style holsters, the TQ style holsters, is, you know, is the glove going to interfere with the latch to, to get the firearm out? Um, if you're if you're carrying a firearm with a safety, you know, is the glove going to interfere with the safety? Um, is the glove going to interfere with the trigger? And a lot of the, a lot of the gloves we have, you know, they got a little bit of fabric at the end of the fingers and thumbs, so you know, essentially that's going to really limit your ab ability to reload. Um, can you get a hold of, you know, or push and feel the the magazine release? Okay. Um, and then get the magazine in without um, catching your glove on the magazine. The other thing is you're going to want to, you know, wrap the slide and see, you know, if your glove is going to get caught in the in the slide mechanism because, you know, your glove gets caught in there, you know, you're going to end up with an out-of-battery condition. The other thing you're going to want to check out that, that I found, and it, this goes along with the revolvers, is... Um, is your glove going to interfere with you getting your finger in the trigger guard? Um, as you can see, this is a pretty small revolver. If I just go to stuff my finger in there, you know, the glove gets caught on there. Um, this one's almost as bad. It does get in there a little farther, but you know, you, you gotta you gotta really kind of think about getting your finger in that trigger. Um, also, your your revolver latch mechanism. You know, can you operate it with your glove on? As you can see that. You know, if I go and insert cartridges in there, that I'm going to have no feel on a, on a reload. So that's, you know, some things that you're going to want to really take a look at. This particular revolver, um, you know, as I push the latch down and go to swing the cylinder out, my glove, you know, could get caught on that cylinder. So these are the things you're going to want to think about along with your heavier clothing and the coats that you're going to be wearing. Yeah, and that, that is a lot, good point. Uh, something like this, when you put it on your person, um, onto your belt, um, are you going to have your coat zipped up, or are you going to have a, a layered system where the outside coat is not zipped up and the, and the firearm will be under that outside coat? Um, there's a lot of really special situations, you know, with cold weather carry that you're going to want to think about and try at the range um, before you actually do it. And uh, it's all a matter of what you like and, and a lot of the clothes that you already have um, will affect, um, could have, will and could affect what you carry and where you carry it, your holster selection, um, your gun selection. Um, there's just a lot of different things to think about and over over the years we picked up we probably got 25 or 30 different styles of holsters 
and some just for that we found are just for cold weather, some for warmer weather, um, with and without latches, um, some just retention style. Um, it's really about how you draw, where you draw your clothes. You know, it, it's it's a lot about personal preference and how you want how fast you want to get that revolver or, or firearm out of your holster. So those are the things you got to consider. Um, ammunition selection is another one. Um, you know, as people wear more clothes, you got to defend yourself. Is that going to affect your ammunition? Are you going to want to go to a plus P if you're carrying a non plus P during the summer? Um, you're going to want to go a little heavier bullet weight to get a little deeper penetration, get through the heavy clothing. Those are some things you got to think about. But, uh, at this time, I think we're going to head to the range and we're going to show you some of the stuff we're talking about and uh, put some rounds down there. This is a regular carry holster that I carry all the time. It is a Serpa, so it does have the, the release. I have to push this release to pull the weapon or pull the gun. Make sure when you pull that out that your finger is not on the trigger. It's easy to do. You have to practice it. I'm going to pull my coat up over, reach, draw the gun, get into my stance, as you can see, it's hard to get my finger in the trigger when I come out. That cloth on the end, you have to watch that. You have to get out here before you can actually pull the trigger. Otherwise, you're going to be shooting right, left, wherever. Let's try this. I'm going to tighten up my glove a little bit. Make sure I got it on pretty tight. back with the coat. This is my regular carry gun and an SR9C Ruger um, with a stealth operator holster. Same thing. Slide up along, finger off the trigger. I'm just going to do the coat sweep back. It's just an average retention holster. Uh, there's a lot of different styles out there that, that are similar to this one. Let's try this. We got a Phobos paddle holster, uh, LCR revolver. We're just going to show you the sweep back to get your coat away from it, and then and then our draw stroke. Uh, keep in mind gloves and keep your finger off your trigger until you're ready to fire. Now. Right there, as you can see, I had trouble getting my finger in that trigger guard to make my first shots. If, when you're going to reholster, you got to make sure this fabric, fabric of your clothes, isn't going to get in your way of reholstering. Okay? okay. What we got here, my revolver in a pocket holster in the back. Uh, essentially, what we're going to have to do with our coat is come in, grab on, bring it up, and then we can establish our grip. What we want to do though is want to really pay attention to sweeping anybody as you come around. You should be coming straight up and locking your elbow and then and then driving out. So we're going to give this a try. We got our gloves on. Uh, short gripped pistols are, are really hard to hang on to. Our consideration of our fingers is something you got to practice. We're going to do also do the sweep back with the coat. This time I've changed the, the gun. Um, it's actually a full-size Ruger SR9 with the same holster that we used before for the compact model, uh, extreme operator, <laughs> stealth operator. Let's see how this works. Hopefully a little better. two coats. I'm going to try a double coat sweep. Still a, the same holster I was using before with the Rugers. But this time I got a different handgun. It's a Walther CCP concealed carry pistol. Uh, we'll see how that works. So, 
we're trying here now is a compact semi-automatic 9mm. Uh, it's a Taurus PT-111 and a stealth operator. Uh, this has got a pretty pretty rough texture to the grip, so I'm hoping it's going to help with the gloves and establishing a proper grip. Um, I've got two coats on, so it kind of i got to make sure to sweep back both of these coats before I can establish my grip. So these are things you're going to want to think about, especially when you're wearing multiple layers. Try this torus over again. A couple of observations uh, we're going to run through at the end of this video, but uh, we had some some uh, issues. I wasn't really satisfied uh, with the shooting, so we're going to try her again. Okay, the observations I had was, first off, we got a bladed trigger here, okay? Now, what happens is, if we can turn this around and get you an idea, my finger, the fabric on the end of the glove hits the trigger guard first off, so you got to really shove to get that in there. And then, what happens is the insulation on the glove doesn't fully depress the blade, so what happens is you get a, a double click here. Okay, you got to really hook your finger around to get that blade, and that gives you the perception that the gun's trying to fire before it's actually trying to fire. So these are all things that you're gonna you're gonna notice these things when you're out at a range practicing with your gloves on in your winter clothes. Back in the range, um, <coughs> about what, 32 30. to 35 degrees yeah, today. Something like that. Um, so what did we learn? Uh, gloves really hamper your ability to get a good grip established and get your finger in the trigger guard. The style of gloves probably would make a difference, um, but uh, you still really have to practice it. Um, the difficulty getting a grip was extreme, especially on a compact pistol and a revolver. Um, trigger guard size, I'm sure, makes a huge difference. We tried four different automatics um, the Storus uh, Ruger SR9C, a full-size Ruger SR9, and the Walther CCP, and uh, about the only one you could really draw effectively was a full-size with gloves on. Getting your trigger finger in the around the trigger was still bad, um, and getting a proper I'm going to say pull on the trigger was sometimes a, a problem. Um, that's what I found. Yeah, I found uh, the, the bladed triggers. Uh, this, the PT-111, the, the gloves interfered with the blade. It didn't really want to depress it very, very well. Um, not so bad on a Ruger. Um, coat. Uh, clearing your coat is, is another thing that takes a lot of practice, uh, especially if you have multiple layers on and, and you have gloves where your your feels hampered. Um, you'll notice that uh, the pocket carrying a revolver, I pulled the revolver and the holster clear out of my pocket. Um, so that's something you're going to want to really take note of. Um, you know, if, a, if you're pocket carrying with a pocket holster or something like that. Um, you're going to want to be able to get that holster off that firearm. Um, getting my finger inside the trigger guard with the revolvers was was a challenge and keeping a good grip that the glove makes like a sliding surface on your hand. So keeping your grip and, and keeping the front sight on target was, was a real challenge. As far as, uh, you know, comfort and um, concealment, that really wasn't an issue because of the big coats and, and stuff like that. It was, um, you know, the use of gloves was, was a big hindrance. Um, and then, you know, you're really going to want to take a look at your style gloves and how much uh, fabric is on the end of your fingers. The other thing that I noticed is as my hands got colder because we were taking our gloves on and off running the camera and whatnot, um, I started to lose feeling in my fingers and that made a difference too. Right. I agree with that. Um, as it got colder, it was harder to draw, harder to uh, get the, um, I'm going to say, sight picture 
it was harder to get a sight picture because you really didn't have a good grip on the gun until you actually looked at it. Um, whereas normally we train, um, you know, from muscle memory where you automatically grip the gun the same way. Whereas with the gloves, you had no feel on the grip. So that was a problem. That was an issue with me. Um, and it, I guess it, the way we also train is pretty much 21 feet uh, from any threat. And you're going to have to really think about that um, with the increased time that it takes to draw your gun and uh, give yourself a little, a little bit extra time and distance between somebody who may or may or may not be a threat to you. So. The other thing you're going to want to think about, um, you know, as, as the winter months progress, um, weather conditions around you, you know, the first thing you should be thinking about is, is movement uh, any time a threat arises and um, heavy boots, uh, slippery surfaces, snow on the ground, um, those are all going to really impede your movement. We didn't do much movement today. We were just really kind of focusing on, on uh, getting our, our cover garments um, drawn back and getting a, a proper grip established and, and getting a, a good draw stroke and getting on target. But, you know, as the, the winter months progress and as the weather gets worse, um, you need, really need to start thinking about movement, especially on slippery surfaces. That's fine.